Agriland's tillage specialist Siobhan Walsh joins us in studio now. Siobhan, we see in Seamus's VT there the challenges that he's facing on the ground. Is the situation unique to him or is it widespread? No, Claire, unfortunately, it's not unique to Seamus. Um, you know, I've been attending a lot of malt and barley meetings and events lately and farmers on the ground are very frustrated. Um, they, they, they say that they need and they want to be paid a higher price for their product um, and have said that they, they have and that they are reducing the acreage of malt and barley that they're growing. Um, and, you know, this is reflected. Chagas have released, you know, every year they release their costs and returns and, you know, a, a three ton per acre or seven and a half ton per hectare crop of malt and barley um, is expected to have a, a gross margin of 589 euro per hectare. And compare that with winter feed barley at four ton an acre or 10 ton per hectare. Um, feed barley is expected to have a gross margin of 649 euro per hectare. So there's a massive difference um, in those two crops. And as Seamus said in the video, he says, maybe um, I'm better off to grow feed barley because um, he won't have the reduction in yield and he won't have to meet the specifications. So maybe it would make his um, job a little bit easier. So a lot of farmers you're hearing are moving away from the malt and barley into the feed. Um, at a time like this, when the drinks industry is booming across the world, it is, it's quite remarkable that there are so many farmers in this specific area, important area within the tillage mm. sector that are facing this. Why has it escalated to this level? Yeah, well, that's very important, a very important point to make. Like whiskey exports last year alone went up by 45 um, million euro to 623 million euro. And in the meantime, then the farmers are struggling um, on the ground. And I suppose it's escalated because last year was a very tough year for farmers. Um, but malt and barley was short and I suppose farmers were paid a good price for their product come harvest time. And they see now they were paid a good price then. Why shouldn't they get paid a good price now? Um, negotiations then between the IFA and Bort Malt. Bort Malt are the, the, the main buyer of malt and barley in the country and set the price for, for the other um, intakes really. Um, you know, negotiations have dragged on between the two. Um, it was meant to be settled in the autumn. Um, it went into February and farmers rejected the offer that was put before them because they said that they want to be paid a minimum of 200 euro per tonne. And I suppose as farmers like Seamus um, are sowing their barley, uh, they have sowed their barley, they will sow their barley, um, they, they're unsure of a price and their, their future this year, they're planning, um, they're unsure of all that. Um, Siobhan, you've been writing really extensively on this whole issue. Recently, you had CSO figures on imports uh, published in Agriland, and mm -hmm. you did a, quite an interesting poll as well, which had some very interesting findings about mm -hmm. consumer trends on uh, drinks and mm -hmm. consumer awareness on where the ingredients for these uh, drinks are sourced. Um, what did you find out? Um, well, I suppose the an important point to make is that 50% of the people who took the poll weren't actually farmers. Um, and the majority of those people who took the poll assumed that their Irish drinks, so 89% of them said that they care that their um, Irish brands are made from um, Irish ingredients. And then the majority of them said that they assumed the Irish ingredients were used in the making of these Irish brands. Um, I suppose very positively um, from the survey, those, the participants said that they were concerned about malt and barley growers and their income and also that they, they were willing to pay another cent on their drink and that's very important because Irish malt and barley farmers say if, they, if a cent was added on to the point it would greatly improve their income. And what about the import situation then at the moment, Siobhan? Yes, yeah, so we released um, the import figures for 2018 in the last few weeks. And um, while we can't differentiate between malting and feed barley in those figures, um, we can estimate in Agriland that about 100,000 tonnes of malting barley were imported in 2018 and 100,000 tonnes of maize for distilling were imported in 2018. So... Irish drinks are being produced from these imports um, and very worryingly um, I suppose 28,000 tonnes of malt were imported which is uh, relatively small I suppose but um, this malt was coming from a number of different regions and a small amount of this malt um, was coming from unknown regions so the CSO weren't actually able to say where it was coming from. Very interesting. Um, Siobhan, just back to the, the poll for a minute, although this is uh, not a scientific study, it's not scientific evidence that we have, but interestingly, you pointed out that 78% of those surveyed assumed that Irish branded whiskey um, and beer was made by Irish products. Um, what about, are there issues there regarding the marketing of these products? Are, are changes needed there on uh, how the consumers are targeted on these products? 
Yeah, so I suppose these products have built up their brands on the basis of being produced from Irish products um, produced by Irish farmers. And Irish farmers are getting very increasingly frustrated um, at these advertising campaigns. If you, if when at the malt and barley meetings that I've been going to, um, you know, farmers have said that they want the pictures of Irish farms and farmers to be taken down from the distilleries and the breweries. Um, one farmer called out a line from the Guinness website, which he said he believed to be, that is now untrue. He's, um, the line from the website reads, um, it begins with barley, barley sown on Irish soil and malted um, behind our famous gates. It's not an easy grain to grow, and which is why we have relationships with farmers that span three generations. And farmers are saying that that relationship is no longer really there. So Siobhan, is there need for legislation to be brought in or what can the stakeholders, state bodies of government, what kind of action are the farmers calling for on the ground? Yes, well at the minute, um, Irish malt whiskey, Irish pot still, Irish grain whiskey can be made from grain from anywhere in the world. Um, so yes, farmers are saying there is a need for legislation for these drinks brands for a certain amount of Irish ingredients to be included um, in these products. And farmers have said, you know, Mark Brown from the IFA's Malt and Barley Committee has said that Irish malt and barley will not be there in a few years time because it's no longer viable to grow. Um, and Agriland has contacted the big stakeholders. Um, Minister Creed said he declined to comment um, on the matter, Borbia have also said that as well. Uh, Siobhan, just finally, we're, we're almost out of time. Just on the Bort malt suppliers, what's next on that issue? Well, the IFA um, are the people who negotiate with Bort malt and they have advised farmers to take the seed, to sow the crop, um, and once the crop is sown, hopefully negotiations will improve and a deal will be made. Thanks very much, Siobhan, for coming in to us. Thanks, Claire.